Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The following clip is from one of my classes on Sutra Al-Kahf. And in this, uh, I am discussing uh, the, uh, the, the Jewish God. Okay. And we all know that Christians take, have adopted a son. Uh, what we know less about, or generally we know less about, is what Zohar teaches the Jews about God. And so this is what I will be discussing uh, in this. Okay. The Jews, okay, they also uh, started to make, so we generally, when we think of Jews, we think of, you know, they're very, they're very much on the oneness of Allah. Even though they are not, and I'll explain that in some detail since I brought this up. But they have this concept called the Shekinah, which is the preeminent feminine aspect of God. Okay? So they have a idea of oneness of God. But uh, according to the Zohar, which is their more secretive books, okay, that God has a feminine side. So God is male and female. Okay? This made the feminists very happy. Uh, you know, this association between the Shekhinah, the supernatural mother, and human mothers is given a biological dimension in Zohar. Okay, did you just read that? Okay, and the most popular work of medieval Kabbalah. Okay, Zohar understands God as power and is utterly transcendent, at the same time wholly eminent, eminent in our world. Okay. Uh, now... So Zohar makes God, uh, perhaps the most popular symbol, however, is Rufa, the body. It states that God made humans an image of God's image. So the same thing as Christianity. So if human beings are like God, uh, then there is a likeness between human beings and God. This is according to the Kabbalists. These are the people that perform the magic. Okay, so this is a different form of Judaism compared to the previous Judaism just as we have a different form of Santa Claus Christianity uh, which is a you know you have the great uh, divide between the Roman Catholics and the Protestants and then from the Protestants you have evangelical Christians who have a completely under different understanding of Christianity today compared to the past. And so this is what's happening with, uh, with, with Judaism. So now, when you keep that in mind, and you read the verse of Surah Al-Kahf, they say Allah has adopted a walad. Walad is used for male and female. So Allah has adopted a son, or Allah has adopted uh, a child. Okay. So this fits very much, by the way, into the Kabbalist point of view. Okay, that they themselves agree that God can, you know, God, God is like us and we can be like God. So Kabbalists understood this verse literally. If human beings are in, in the form of anthropos, human body, and if human beings were made in the image and the likeness of God, then God must be anthropos too. I know, surprise, surprise. So the Jewish people, okay, uh, and uh, if you look at the this this the sefir, what is called the sefir or the sifat of God, they literally look at the human body and say, okay, God has man has a brain, God has a brain. Like they go like this, you know, God has a mouth, God speaks to us. We have a mouth, He speaks to us. Okay, and so I'm sure that a lot of you might have been a little bit taken by. Okay, the Zohar represents the realm of the sifarat. Okay, and uh, let me just tell you what this is also, so you just can understand uh, this idea that they don't have the concept of oneness of Allah in the sense that we do, okay? And then this is uh, the Jewish virtual library, and this is talking about the 10 different ways, like the head has a crown on it, so the 10 different body parts almost, but these are the 10 different ways God can reveal himself, okay? And they take this to be very, you know, uh, literal, okay? Um, 
And so again, this has to do with the male and the female aspect of, of God. Okay. And so this is uh, going to be important as we discuss some of these issues. Okay. Uh, now, let me just mention, since I mentioned this, I'll mention this. I didn't want to go there, but I'm going to mention only because I think it's interesting. And so you can have an understanding of who is the greatest Jewish philosopher. Anybody know? Who's known as the greatest uh, Jewish philosopher? Okay, the greatest Jewish philosopher is a man uh, by the name of Moses. Moses Monides. Okay. He lived in the Muslim world. Okay. And uh, he is known as the most important Jewish philosopher. Okay. So along, he was influenced by Islam, of course, but didn't like Islam too much. That's a whole different uh, thing. But Maimonides was the most important uh, uh, Jewish philosopher, even to the point today, if there is a disagreement in there, uh, fiqh. If there's a disagreement in their fiqh issues, they will refer back to Maimonides. Okay, they will refer back to Moses Maimonides if there's a, a fiqh difference of opinion on some issue. Okay. Uh, now, Maimonides said, and so this is just so that you can appreciate uh, the level of scholarship at one level and the stupidity of scholarship on the other level. So Maimonides said, okay, there was nothing but God, right? So there was nothing but God. And then God uh, created the universe. So where did the space for the universe come from if there was only God? So this is the question that he was trying to answer. So Maimonides, the way he answered this question is, he said, well, you know, uh, the way... Uh, the way, uh, you know, you hold your breath a little bit to give your lungs, like, let's say if you're, if there's walls on all side and you're in that space between the walls and you want to create something, so you're going to hold your breath, like take your breath in a little bit and that's going to, um, you're not going to fully breathe, but you'll breathe a little bit, but not fully breathe, right? But you'll create a little bit of space and that little space is where we are created. Okay, this is Maimonides. So uh, what about the Islamic concept of this? Where are we uh, in comparison to where is Allah? So the example of that is more like uh, if I imagine a chair in my mind, I am nor above it. I mean, not, it cannot be given a direction compared to a chair in my mind. I'm, uh, I, if I focus on the chair and that chair has a reality as long as I'm focused on it, but I'm not in any particular direction of that chair. So this is the Asharia Aqidah, that's similar to something like this. So this is this gives you an idea to compare how, or other other Asharia and Mathuridia scholars, they said the example is, if you look at a mirror, the mirror has no reality, but the reality is put forth by the person standing in front of the mirror. So this is not to give an example between humans and Allah, but our reality is like no reality in comparison to Allah. And just as if I'm thinking about that chair and its existence exists in my mind, just like that, just as that chair is dependent upon me for its existence, we are dependent upon Allah for our existence. Okay, so this is one way to look at it. But I was only trying to show you here that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Surah Al-Kahf in the very beginning uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, let me just show that to you and show you why this is interesting. I wasn't going to talk about this issue but since uh, you know Allah brought it to my mind that's fine. Okay. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيُنْذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا 
and to warn those people who say Allah has adopted his son. And uh, if you look at, again, this same issue, uh, I will now share with you some interesting things about this. Uh, if you go to Surat Al-Ikhlas, you'll also notice something. Okay. Lam yalid, he was not born, is in past tense. Okay, Lam yalid, do you see that? The wow, ya, and alif interchange. So Lam yalid, he was not born. Walam yulad is what? Yulad is what? Past, present, future, what is it? Can somebody tell me? What is, what is yulad? Yulad is which form? Is it past tense or present future? It's present future. Meaning Allah is saying here, I was not born and I will not be, be giving birth in the future at any time to any child ever, ever, ever. Lam yalid. Sometimes you mention lam with present tense to make a stronger emphasis of something in the past. And lam yulid, yulad can also mean something with emphasis of negation for something in the future. Okay, and then... Now, the surah, the verse of the Qur'an that is most similar to Surah Al-Ikhlas is not by surprise, because I'm about to show you something. If you put it all together, it will be somewhat uh, amazing for you. And that is that when you look at the last verse of Surah Al-Bani Israel, which is the twin surah of Surah Al-Kahab. Okay? قُلْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ That's how Allah says, say Alhamdulillah, then Surah Al-Kahf starts with Alhamdulillah. Okay? Qul Alhamdulillah alladhi lam yattakhidh walad. Allah is the one who doesn't take for himself a son. Then Surah Al-Kahf starts with saying Alhamdulillah, and Allah then says again, I don't take a son. Qul Alhamdulillah alladhi lam yattakhidh walad. So why is there this emphasis in these two surahs about Allah adopting a son? Because Judaism and Christianity will have changed and morphed into a religion that would put, even though these ideas would be there from before, but now they've morphed into a religion that looks, that says, that openly says, oh, God can adopt a son. Okay. And what is the psychology of wanting to adopt a son or saying that God can adopt a son? We'll look at that in a second. Uh, maybe not today, some other time. Alhamdulillah, الذي لم يتخذ ولد. Alhamdulillah, for the one who doesn't adopt a son. ولم يكن له شريك في الملك. The same exact ayah is in Surah Al-Kahf also. If you remember, let me uh, remind you 